For this video, I thought I would do something a little bit different. Rather than talk about a particular piece of test equipment, we're going to talk a little bit about multimeters and how they've evolved over the last 100 years or so if they've been developed and refined. We'll look at VOMs, VTVMs, DMMs, and some other types of multimeters, and I'll, we'll look at a few representative models of different types. As electricity is not directly visible, we need some kind of test equipment to measure it. Since the late 1800s, the most common basis of test equipment was a meter of some type. Based around the so-called Darsenval meter movement, originally developed by Jacques Arsène Darsenval and Marcel Dupré in the 1880s, the meter they designed was quite sensitive, accurate, and low cost. The basic meter movement responds to current, typically a few tens or hundreds of microamps for a full-scale reading. Adding a series resistance allows it to measure voltage for any desired range. The resistor limits the current flowing through the meter when a higher voltage is applied. Adding a parallel or shunt resistance, it can measure higher current ranges. The shunt allows a portion of the current to pass through it rather than directly through the meter. To measure resistance, we can use a small power source, a battery is adequate, to apply a voltage through the resistor under test. It can be adjusted so that shorting the test leads will show full scale on the meter. An open circuit will show no current flow. Thus you can calibrate the dial as ohms with zero on the right side and open circuit or infinity on the left. The meter movement can't directly measure AC since it responds to the average value and AC has an average value of zero. A rectifier, either a tube or solid state diode, can convert the AC to DC so that the movement will, be, will respond and the meter can be calibrated to show RMS voltages for a sine wave. With a suitable switching arrangement, you can provide a meter that can measure AC and DC current and voltage and resistance in several ranges. This is typically called a VOM or volt ohm milliammeter. These have been around since the late 1800s, and here's a few representative models. The main limitation of a VOM is that it needs to draw current from the circuit under test to power the meter. With a 1 milliamp meter movement, for example, it needs to draw 1 milliamp of current for a full-scale reading. If the meter was set for a 100 volt range, for example, the input resistance would be, using Ohm's law, resistance equals voltage over current, 100 volts over 0 0.001 amp, or 100,000 ohms. In some circuits, especially those using vacuum tubes, applying 100 kilo ohms across a circuit could significantly change the voltage in the circuit, causing an inaccurate reading or even preventing the circuit, such as a radio, from operating. The introduction of vacuum tubes offered a solution. Vacuum tubes are essentially voltage control devices and only a very small input current is needed to control the flow of current in the output. By using a vacuum tube amplifier to drive a meter, the input resistance can be made very high, typically 10 million ohms over all the input ranges. This minimizes the loading effect on the circuit. The VTVM or vacuum tube voltmeter is based on this principle. It also addresses another issue with VOMs, overload. If the input voltage or current is much too high for the selected range, the meter movement will likely be destroyed, even if protected by a fuse. In extreme cases of overload, a meter could catch fire or explode, causing harm to the operator. A VTVM can limit how much the meter movement is driven, avoiding damage to the movement. By the late 1930s and 40s, VTVMs became pretty commonplace for radio and later television repair use and similar applications. You may see radio manuals that indicate that voltages shown in the manual are to be measured using a VTVM. Here's a couple of Heathkit VTVMs. The design of these was essentially unchanged from the 1940s through the 1980s. The main disadvantages of VTMs are that they are typically powered from the AC line, so they're larger than a VOM and not portable. They take some time for the tubes to warm up, and they typically still use a battery for the ohms function that must be periodically replaced. With the discovery of the transistor, vacuum tube circuits were adapted to solid state. The field effect transistor, much like a tube, has an extremely high input resistance. This led to solid state devices called solid state VTVMs or FET or FET voltmeters. Here are a couple of representative units. By the 1960s, digital electronics took off. A logical step was to offer meters with digital displays. They were easier to read and avoided the cost of a meter movement and were more rugged. With digital multimeters, or DMMs, the most obvious change over time was in the type of display. Here I have a few examples. A high voltage neon, often called Nixie display. 
a red seven segment light emitting diode or LED display, a liquid crystal or LCD display. There are situations where an analog meter is still useful, such as adjusting a circuit for a peak or a null. In these cases, an analog display is preferred, either using a mechanical meter movement or using a bar graph on a digital display. Since the 1980s, DMMs have improved and evolved in a number of areas. Commonly seen features in modern meters include auto-ranging, avoiding the need to switch ranges using a switch, true RMS measurement of non-sine wave AC signals, ranges to support making other measurements such as temperature, capacitance, inductance, frequency and duty cycle, and transistor testing, storage of measurements, computer interfaces, and signal generator functions, and increased accuracy and precision. At the same time, meters have become smaller and lower in cost. You may notice a wide range of prices for meters that appear on the surface to have similar capabilities. Generally, a more expensive meter is going to be safer, complying with standards like CAT for fuses, probes, and handling of overloads, better overall build quality and life of the components like the switches, and higher accuracy and the ability to maintain its calibration for a longer period of time. I have an old radio book that covers some ways to measure voltage without a meter. It can be done using light bulbs or even some chemical reactions. These are laughable today as you can buy a ridiculously low cost, accurate and functional digital meter for as little as 20 US dollars. I hope this video has given you some insight into how multimeters have evolved over the years. If you're interested in learning more, I've made individual YouTube videos covering most of the meters I've shown here as well as other types of test equipment.